of here in the hill with myself vicki campbell and pastor campbell come on in family you definitely want to stay tuned to this teaching tonight but we told you we're going to be going through a series of uh, the things that god dealt with in our lives the things we experience called the adventures in faith where we begin to take you through some of the things that we experienced in our ministry other things that we hadn't shared with anyone i'm telling you, we have some stories to tell but people are so to the point to where they don't believe that you can't tell them the thing because they kind of halfway look at us Christians anyway sideways. And so when you tell them what God has done and what God can do, where you take the Bible and you make the Bible a reality, they kind of look at you like you're strange. But <laughs> it's amazing that the things that are recorded in this Bible, that we that believe God, the Bible is so true. These signs do follow them that believe. And we're going to begin to talk about some signs and wonders. And so we can let you know that we're just not here preaching to you just to be preaching to you. We're not preaching to you an empty Logos word. We're preaching to you and teaching you a rhema word. And so the things that we're ministering, you will understand our true conviction of how we believe and why we believe what we believe is because God is true in his word. All he's looking for is some people to believe in him. And so there are come times when we walk in the walk with God, things slip from us. Amen. We don't see the signs. We don't see the wonders. We don't see the miracles. Why? Because faith begins to dwindle down, and the enemy takes advantage of that. And so we begin to be like what Gideon said, where is God of all the miracles and signs and wonders that our forefathers talked about? Mm -hmm. Where is, that, is there? If there's no faith to believe, then there's no reason why God should even manifest himself. Right. For the Bible tells us that his eyes are roaring, roaming to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for that one whose heart is perfect toward him, that he may show himself strong in. Right. And so God wants to show himself strong in our life, but we have to believe it and we have to believe by faith. Mm -hmm. Signs and wonders follow them that believe. That is the truth. When we get to a place where we believe God, we're, we're face value, we're going to begin to see some things happen. And I'm telling you, Joshua and Caleb wants us to be like them. God wants us to have their spirit. He said, Joshua and Caleb have a, this is what he said, they have a different spirit. In other words, their spirit is not like the spirit of the norm. And if you look at it as church today, they have a spirit that believes me that whatever I said in my word, they trust it. And so they said, if God delighted us, how many of you believe that God delights in you? He proved it over 2,000 years ago when he sent his son to die for right. you. For God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him should not perish but have everlasting life. You was on God's mind when he thought about you and he sent, when he sent his son. And so we're going to learn some things that's going to build you up and get you excited. One of the things that, that I really endeavor the Spirit of God to do is that as we teach, your faith just begins to expand and explode. And it causes you to want to get up off your chair, get up off the sofa, and go forth and do the things that God commands us to do. In other words, encouraging you to the point where we say, well, you are declaring and decree. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. There's nothing, there's no mountain too big that I can't do what God said I can do. What Christ said I can speak to that mountain, tell that mountain to be removed, and it will obey me. And there are some mountains that got to move out of our way. And tonight, whatever your mountain may be, I'm going to give you something that's going to encourage you to let you know you can move that mountain. Yes. And guess what? You will move that mountain. So let's pray. Open up your heart to receive what the Spirit of the Lord is going to say to you because Amen. He's going to transform you into another person. You're not going to be the same after this teaching. And I'm telling you, there's going to be some things that's going to be opened up unto you. There's going to be some sacred cows that's going to be pulled down. There's going to be some strongholds that's going to be demolished concerning this word. And I'm telling you, you're going to be able to run through Amen. troops and leap over Thank walls you, knowing this here, that greater is He that is in you than he that is in this world. So, Father, in the name of Jesus yes, Christ Lord. of Nazareth, thank I you, thank you for this opportunity, for you giving us the release, to release yes, the things Lord. that you have ministered in our life on our behalf and the things that we have seen in our ministry yes. concerning your miraculous you. miracle work and power. And that, yes, Lord, you wanted to be for the whole body of Christ. You commanded us, go and yes. teach the gospel to every creature. Then they that believe shall be baptized and be saved, and those that believe not shall be damned. And these signs follow them that believe. They shall 
shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. They shall cast out devils. Yes. Lord, if they drink any deadly thing, thing, it shall not hurt Jesus. them. Yes. And I thank you right now, Lord, that thank you are you, working Lord. with us with yes, those Lord. confirming those words. Thank and so, you, Lord, as we begin to release the adventures of faith in our life, yes. the things that you showed thank yourself you. mighty in, that the people will believe. I pray right now for the spirit of belief. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that had an ear to hear, yes, let, him hear. let him hear. I'm commanding you to hear and to receive what God has, has done in our life so yes. we can show you that the book Thank that you. we read is a true, bona fide, yes. validated book. That it, all the things that are written in it Thank are being you. witnessed and testified of today. Yes, the Lord. same yesterday, today, and forever. What he worked Thank back in the days of Jesus. Moses, the days of Noah, yes, the, days of, the days of Jesus. He is still yes. working today. All yeah, them that will believe. Jesus. So, Lord, increase our yes, faith Lord. and let us receive that which you are, you yes. are doing in this end time. Thank you. Raising Lord. the dead, casting out devils, yes. opening blinded eyes, opening deaf ears, causing the dumb yes. to speak. God, bringing forth provision where there is lack thank and you, need. Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Power Lord. of God, Spirit of the living God, go forth and resonate in the hearts and the minds of your people. Take over us as your vessels. Speak through us and let the words that come out of our mouth be with power and demonstration. Go forth as the power, Lord. Those that hear that needs a healing while the word is going forth, let them be healed in Jesus' name. From the crown of their head to the soles of their yes, feet, Lord. according to your word, Lord, that Thank by you. your stripes they yes, are Lord. healed. And Lord, those that have a financial need, Lord, let the word resonate yes, in their heart, Lord. God, to cause Thank them to Jesus. obey that which you have commanded them in the word. A give Thank and it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running Amen. over God, that you will cause them to do exceeding the abundant book all that they can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in them. Yes. And so God, we acknowledge you, Thank we you. magnify you, yes, we reverence Lord. you, we reverence our Savior, yes. the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank we reverence you, the Holy Spirit who now takes yes. over and takes full control of this teaching yes. that the people may hear that we be moved that they be moved by the Spirit Thank and you, not God. by flesh. We move flesh out of the way and we say, Spirit of the living God, have your yes, way Lord. and speak through your vessels and minister to your people and cause the enemy to be set out of flight as your yes, word go Lord. forth, God, and get in the deep hearts of their the soul, deep soul of their heart to bring forth the fruit. 36 and 100 fold in the, in the name of Jesus, we pray. In the pray. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tonight, Amen. we said that we're going to be talking about the adventures in faith. Yes, That's what we talk titling these here, here and be here series, the adventures in faith. Well, we begin to take you through some things that we saw God do mightily in our ministry and that he's still doing. And this is to stir up your faith. Because there come mm -hmm. seasons. It seems like these things go in seasons. Right. Where we have mighty moves of God, revivals, mm -hmm. and then everything you know, kind of comes right. and settles down. It's because the enemy works so hard, so hard to take the mirac miraculous out of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Till we have this new generation that don't see things. And we that should be still walking in these things, manifesting these things, we get comfortable. Right. And those things are not manifested anymore. Right. Faith doing those down, and then all of a sudden, God starts stirring up another move over here and another move over there, and people begin to believe again. Well, He doesn't want the thing to be going up and down, up and down. He wants this thing to be multiplying exponentially yes. every Amen. season, getting bigger and bigger, growing mm -hmm. and growing and growing. And we are to be growing in grace, yes, maturing. Not Thank like Paul you, said, you're, you're novices. You know, there are times when you should be teaching, but you have indeed that you should be taught. No, he wants us to be going ever, ever increasing in our faith. Yes. That's what is God's desire. And so we're hoping that these teachings will cause you to have cause your faith to be edified. So we're going to take you to some teachings to give you some foundational scriptures, foundation of what we're talking about. Because mm -hmm. anytime anybody says something or does something that doesn't have a biblical evidence, a biblical proof, you can discount it. So what we're going to do mm -hmm. is we're going to build the foundation with the word so that when you hear our stories, you will say, that's the word of God. Amen. That's the word of God. Yes. That's the word of God being manifested. And I'm telling you what an awesome God we serve. Nothing and no one. And when Paul said this here, mm -hmm. nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Mm -hmm. He was talking on both sides. God loves us so much that there's nothing that can separate us from him. And then we, therefore, in turn, love God because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. And the things that we've seen him manifest in our life, right. nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yes. See, a, a person, now watch this here. The Bible says, and they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Yes. We got so many people that are turning away from the gospel, turning away from the kingdom, mm -hmm. because they really hadn't really experienced him. Right. 
They really hadn't experienced him. They really hadn't tasted the goodness of God. They really hadn't known that God is the omnipotent, creator, powerful God that wants to intervene in your life. They just know this book. They just know the story. They just know what somebody <coughs> told, told them. But when they seen God intervene in their life, mm -hmm. you can't stop Amen. them from being a Christian. Right. They will give up their very life because they know that the God they serve is real. And so that if he's real, that what he says, he's what he says is real. And so therefore, they'll, they'll tell you in a minute. Mm -mm. I will not renounce Christ. I will not denounce right. him. You can take my life. I will stand up yes. and I will receive him before the world. I will not be ashamed of him. Now, those that really don't know him, but just know what the preacher preach, just know what the book says, read a few scriptures, they're not convinced. They're not convinced. You can tell when a person is strong in faith, they're convinced. Yes. I am convinced that this word is true and the God that we serve is real. So as we take you through the adventures of faith in our life, know this here. You can't get me to turn away from this here. And so when, when people say you have a strong conviction yes. concerning healing, you have a, a strong conviction concerning God making provision mm -hmm. that I do. And you know what? Even if there's a time of patience that I'm waiting yes. to my patience be perfected while I'm waiting on God, everyone can observe and say, well, look like you're going through just as much as we're going through and you still believe God. I will maintain my integrity because I know that God is true. Amen. And this is the confidence yes. that I have that if I know that he's true. Then I know I'll have the petition that I ask for. Not just, just that he hears me, but that I know he's real. Yes. And so therefore I Amen. have something Thank tangible you, that I can come, have confidence in. And so I am not moved by what it see. And this is what I tell myself. If, if my faith yes. even begins to waver, this is how I correct me. I don't care what goes on. I'm a lie before God is. That's I'm right. a liar Amen. before God is. Because the Bible says that every man be a liar and God the truth. Yes. Whatever this book says... I can stand on it. But enough said, let's build some foundation and then we're going to tell you our story. And you know what? It's up to you. You can believe it or not. But I'm telling you, the devil Amen. can't take this away from me and neither can anyone's Amen. doubt or unbelief. And just because you hadn't seen a thing don't be, does not mean it yes. doesn't exist. That's the biggest mistake Christians make. I've even heard preachers say, God's not raising the dead anymore. Just because you hadn't seen it just because your ministry hadn't experienced it does not right. mean it does not work. That's right. Doesn't mean it's not real. Yes, that's one of the things that God miraculously worked in our ministry. We'll tell you about that. God raising the dead. Uh, we got so many stories to tell you. Yes, Get ready. Lord. And you, you know what? I'll, I'm telling you this here. We don't believe in telling no lies. The Bible says a liar shall not tarry Amen. in his sight. So I'm not going to even play with you by saying, oh, I wanted to make that up. None of these stories are made up. They are specific. Amen. I'm telling you, you will hear the same thing over and over again. Some we may give more information than we did the last time, but some we may leave out some information. But the, but the, the I'll say the, the focus and the main yes. part of the story will never change. You can Amen. ask me a hundred, a thousand, a million times, and you're going to mm -hmm. get the same story. Yes. That's how you know it's Amen. the truth, the yes. same story. And so today we're going to talk about the gift of faith. You're going to have to understand this and you're going to have to get this and you're going to have to believe this. If you get this, this teaching in your heart, yes. you will move Thank every you, mountain. Yes. You will move every mountain. You will never have a, a, a reason to get discouraged. I'm telling you mm -hmm. because we have a God that is so faithful. Yes. So faithful. That's how I can. That's the reason why I can <coughs> depend on him because he is a God that is so faithful. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to teach about the gift of faith. And how precious your faith is. Yes. Amen. Peter said we have like precious faith. Your yes. faith is precious. But your faith is also vital. For the Bible says without faith is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. You need your faith. Right. But don't worry. Don't worry. Many people would be saved or many people would be healed or many people <clears throat> would be delivered because they misunderstand the, 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 uh, the, the whole thing behind faith. They misunderstand faith. We're going to clear this up today. Pull down sacred cows destroy strongholds, you're going to be set free in your spirit, in your mind, in your heart. You're going to have an understanding of faith like you've yes. never had before because sometimes we make faith seem so out there and so hard to obtain. Right. Faith is not hard to obtain. You're going to find out that you got it and something you don't even realize you have it. But when you found out the essence behind what you have and what you possess, oh, you're going to say, you're going to walk in the house and say, devil, devil, <laughs> devil. 
You've been found <laughs> out. I've got understanding now, and I will not perish anymore. Yes, for the amen. word says, by people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? You're about to get some understanding tonight. God's yes. going to give you a revelation amen. that's going to set you free and revolutionize your whole life in totality. So what I want to do is I want to first build this thing up with the foundation of faith and give you many witnesses that you can depend on concerning your faith. And then I'm going to give you a story of an adventure that God took us through to show us just how faithful he is. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to first um, look at Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3. Let's look at Romans 12 and 3. Okay. Romans 12 and 3. Yes. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Romans 12 and 3. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm in Corinthians. I think, that, I, think I wrote the wrong one okay, down. Okay. All right. I'm almost there. Romans 12 and 3. Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. Romans 12 and 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has dealt toward every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the first thing you, you, you came to your mind, if you, if you know the word, the scripture came to, what would you, what would you think came to, the, to their minds? When God, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every time you hear something, the, the devil always want to bring something negative up. What would be the negative part of that? The measure of faith. God mm -hmm. has dealt to every man the measure of faith. But the negative part of that. The what would most people part. think of when they think about the negative part? Well, the Bible says God, all men don't have faith. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> so so right. how do you how do you rightly divide that, Reverend? Well, you, that's true. <laughs> the Bible doesn't conflict itself. Here Paul says God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. And then there's a scripture that says not all men have faith. And so here's the thing mm -hmm. about it. God, watch this here. God deals the measure of faith to everyone that makes Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. Watch how this works. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When the gospel mm -hmm. is preached to that person... Amen. That person cannot believe until faith is released. Now, God is releasing to every man the measure of faith. There's two things that happen when you hear the word. Your heart can either resist it by gnashing your teeth against the word, getting mm -hmm. angry, and says, I don't believe that mess. And you turn away and you resist the Holy Ghost and you go away. Or you could open up your heart and say, what must I do to be saved? When you ask that question, yeah. faith comes Amen. because you're hearing the word. And as you're hearing it, you, you, you open up to receive and you believe in your heart. Now God releases to you faith to believe. Mm -hmm. When you believe in your heart, you confess yes. with your mouth. You are saved. At that moment, God had dealt to you the measure of faith. Now, when you receive that faith, you have it. It is yours. And a lot of people think we lose it, but you're going to find out you never lose it. And you'll, I'm going to give you, when I tell you my story, you're going to find out how good God is and how faithful he is. And so now those that don't have faith are those that have made up their mind not to believe the gospel, not to receive it. And so they don't have faith. And that's how they can act wicked. That's how they can persecute the church. That's mm -hmm. how they can do all the things that they would not desire to do. Right. That it's evil toward God. Mm -hmm. So now, Paul said, by the grace that is given unto me. For every man to think, not think highly of himself, than he ought yes, to think, amen. but a so, the, the, the think soberly, according to as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So now, say this with me, I have faith. I have faith. I have faith. You have faith. Mm -hmm. find out we're going, what we need to find out is how we develop the faith. So let's pull down this sacred cow. When we misunderstand the word, when Paul says not all men have faith, that we can just have faith and lose it, have faith and lose it. We're going we're gonna to address that. But the fact that, wait a minute, if I am a born again believer, I have faith. Mm -hmm. I have faith. Mm -hmm. I, sometimes I might have to find out where my faith at. I might have to find out that why is my faith a little, but I have faith. Yes. Now, Amen. Now let's go and read Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Wherefore, seeing we also, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is one promise you do not want to forget. Amen. There have been times, when to, to get to my story, there, there have been a time that I felt like I had no faith. But then it, this scripture, this scripture here is a promise that we stand on when he says, now, what Paul is talking about, he's beginning to teach, to teach the people about faith and how faith can obtain things. He says, now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 and 1. Then he goes to say, by faith, the elders obtain even a good report. And he begins Amen. to tell you the things yes. that people obtain and Amen. the things that people achieve with their faith. And so Paul said, now see, I gave you all these examples, yes. seeing that we are encompassed about, because these are still living people that are watching us, right. about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, mm -hmm. those things that will come Amen. and quench your faith, cause your faith to feel, to be null and void, to, to make your faith ineffective. He says, let us lay aside those things, look it unto Jesus. He yes. is the author, the creator. Yes. Amen. And the finisher or developer of our faith. So that faith that God has dealt toward you, our Savior, our elder brother, is making sure that that faith gets developed because he knows that that's what you need to please God. Mm -hmm. And so with our faith, it's impossible to please God. For right. me, that come in must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Jesus is the high priest, not only over your confession, yes. but he's the high priest over your faith. He's the author. He's the creator. He is the developer. He's the establisher. He's going to make sure your faith yes, does Thank not you, fail Jesus. you. Yes. You're going to find that out. Mm -hmm. This is the confidence that we have that Jesus is the author and the finisher of, of my faith, right. of our faith. And so Paul says this here now, let us lay aside all those things because those other things trick you up, causes your faith not to work. Mm -hmm. But it does not mean you don't have it. Right. It's just inoperative. Mm -hmm. It's just like having the Holy Spirit. He said he'll never leave us or, or nor forsake us. But when we grieve him, he's inoperative in our lives. Right. So the idea is we got to make sure that we cause these things to work. And so Paul says, lay aside those things that are that are foolish and ignorant, those things that are petty. Mm -hmm. Those things do hinder faith. Right. But we know faith working by love. So let's make sure we are, we're moving in the right vein. We're mm -hmm. moving in the right vein. He says, now look it unto Jesus. Let's keep stay focused on our, our high priest. He's mm -hmm. the establisher, the developer, the creator of our faith. He will be the one that will make sure that our faith is not is not and our faith is intact that it doesn't fail right. amen yeah. and so now now i'm going to show you just how um how jesus watches over our faith mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about thomas because thomas just flat out said if i don't see it i won't believe it and i'm going to show you how powerful and how faithful our god is and that's coming in john the, the 20th chapter 19 through the 29th verse we're going to read 10 verses but we got to hear the whole story mm -hmm. concerning john Concerning Thomas. Okay. 20, you said 19. Mm -hmm. All the way to 29. Okay. First. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for the fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he said so, and when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands, his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, who, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side. 
I will not believe. And after eight days, again, the disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believeth. You got to get this. Now, he, Jesus is bringing a parallel mm -hmm. of Thomas and that had not believed. But, and he was not going to be a believer unless he saw it. But think about this here. For us that almost gets discouraged or for us that do get discouraged because we hadn't yeah. seen what he said. He says, no, no, no. Listen, there is a greater faith. There's a, there's a higher calling. Thomas had to see. You believe because you see. And a lot of people believe because they see. When are you healed? Well, when I, when I, when I receive it. Well, then you, there's no need for faith. Right. Because you already have it. You don't have to believe for it anymore. You know, why, you Paul said, it. why would you have faith and hope for what, that, what you see? Right. So you have to. So, but blessed is he that believe but had not seen. When hands are laid on you, mm -hmm. you've got to declare and agree with that person that's praying for you. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You got to say, you, I believe that I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. Thank I believe you. that. And you walk away. Thank God I'm healed Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I don't see I I, I don't mm -hmm. see it. No, 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 no. I believe. I don't have to see it. I believe it because God said it in his word. Yes. If the church could ever get that, we will start seeing signs and wonders like never before. And we got leaders that don't believe this. When mm -hmm. are you going to get healed, Reverend? Uh, when I get healed? No, 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 no. <laughs> we call mm -hmm. those things that be not as though they were. You say what God's word say and you agree with it. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he that have sent him that believe that had not seen. Mm -hmm. But here's the good thing. Jesus heard what Thomas said. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a little bit of his being. He was, a, a, I can say he got his feelings hurt because he wasn't there and didn't see it. And so that's how, you know, how we are. Yeah. We, we really just being sarcastic. <laughs> well, I won't believe it unless I see it. I don't think, I think y'all just lying. And it was, it was not the idea that he didn't, that, that he didn't believe really. And he, he probably didn't believe, but the idea that he wasn't there to see it with himself and he was jealous. <laughs> well, Thomas, I don't know what you were doing. You should have been there. Yeah. What were you doing? Why were you out of place? You should have yes. been hanging with the disciples. But 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 nevertheless, let's take the word for face value. He didn't believe. He says, unless I, and Jesus heard everything he said, unless mm -hmm. I see this, the, the, the scars in his hand, unless I put my finger in his side, I won't believe. Now you mm -hmm. think about it, eight days later, Christ wasn't there, but he heard him. Mm -hmm. And he walked up to Thomas. Now, this is how faithful and loving your God yes, is. Lord. Amen. He came directly to Thomas and addressed him mm -hmm. in a loving way. He says, Thomas, look at my hands. Touch him. Put your finger in, in my side. That should have convicted him right there. Was says, man, how you hear? What, <laughs> how did you hear what I said? Yeah, I am the Lord. You're gonna believe that one day. Mm -hmm. And then this is what he 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 declared to Thomas: Be not faithless. Mm -hmm. He spoke that to him. So he he spoke faith into Thomas again. Mm -hmm. He is the author and the and the finisher of our faith. He developed faith in Thomas by saying, "Be." Not faithful. faithful. That's mm -hmm. just as saying, Thomas, be of faith. Just like God says, light be mm -hmm. and light was. So right. he was using his commanded authority and dominion to speak faith back into Thomas. He says, Thomas, be not faithless. Yes. I know. Why? Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we have to get. But the thing I want us to get is you have faith. Let this resound in your heart. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he. That have not seen, yet believe. Yes. I've never seen the dead being raised. No, but still believe. Right. You may not ever seen anybody get healed from cancer, but believe. Right. You may not ever be, ever see anybody give their heart to God, but believe. Yes. Amen. You hear what the word says, you believe. 
We do not, we are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what we see. We are not, we are not moved by what we see. We are moved by the word of God. Yes. And if God says a thing, it shall be so. For he said himself, I am not a man that I shall lie, nor the son of man that I shall repent. If I said it, I will do it. If I've spoken it, I will make it good. Amen. So if it comes out of my mouth, you can rest on it. You can believe it. You can take it to the bank. I'm going to cause it to manifest. Yeah. And so we have this confidence <clears throat> in our God. But all this is just logos. All this is just Bible. All this is just fiction <laughs> that we wrestle with. Well, is this really real? And on a good day, we believe it. And on a bad day, why is all these bad things happening to me? Why is nothing good ever happens to me? Mm -hmm. Seems like the wicked always prosper. Man, you're not the only one that said that. This, you go back and read Malachi. Mm -hmm. Malachi, right. the people in Malachi thought that. Why the wicked always prosper? You go, go back to the children of Israel. Man, these guys are, are, this city is locked up. Look at the size of these, these, these giants. You know, we're, we're grasshoppers in their sight. That's, people think like that when mm -hmm. they don't know God. Right. But them that know God, oh, you can't move them. Amen. There's a strong conviction in them. And Joseph could have had anything he wanted, especially uh, Potiphar's wife. But he had a fear for God because he knew God was real. For us that think God's not real, we'll do stupid stuff mm -hmm. because we don't realize that he's real. And it's easy for us to just do what we want to do and let flesh and sin take over. But we that know that God is real and that we know there's a day of reckoning coming, that we know we're going to have to stand before his face and hear either one or two things, mm -hmm. depart from me or enter in thy good and faithful servant. We that really believe that, we that really believe that there's a hell, while we got a lot of preachers out there that are saying that there is none, mm -hmm. we that really believe that right. we do govern ourselves accordingly. And we believe every word that God says yes, in this book. Lord. And we expect to see God move with signs and wonders following. Yes, Lord. So now here's the good news. You have faith. Jesus is going to make sure you don't lose it. Yes, Lord. The only way you're going to lose your faith, you have to Jesus. absolutely walk away from it. Walk away from it. So here's the good news. An adventure that we went through. We had our, our youngest son, Jarrell, got mm -hmm. sick. Now listen to this very carefully. Got sick, very sick. Sickness came from out of nowhere. Right. Amen. Now he was already a frail little fellow. He was, he, he, he was just, just as cute as they would say, cute as a button. <laughs> his, his, his body was not catching up with his head. He kind of had like a big head, but not to the point to where it just, it just looked, uh, how do you say, deformed. It just looked cute. You yeah. know, and so he would just, he would walk around, he was very mild mannered, very meek. You know, wouldn't tell a lie was, well, you know, they, they, they uh, he was what you call a perfect <laughs> child, you know, uh, yeah. wasn't one that, that causes confusion, contention. Mm -hmm. He wasn't bad at all. Yep. And we should, uh, we're going to go on and make him embarrassed. She used to call him her little poogie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he was just as sweet as could be. Yep. And all of a sudden he got sick and day by day we saw him go down, 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 down. Mm -hmm. Now, here I am, a young man of God in the gospel, <laughs> hearing what the word says and believing the word of God, knowing only the Bible, not seeing anything right. that God manifested, just going by the word. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. blessed is he that, had, that believed but had not seen. So I had not seen physically for myself the things that God was doing, not because they weren't being done around the world. I just hadn't got to that place where my faith was at, at a place where I believed to begin to see those things happen in my life. But I loved God with all my heart because I saw some other things that he drew me to and that there was a drawing in me that God was doing. And I say that this have to be God because I don't, man don't love to read the Bible like this. I went from not, not even having a Bible to consuming the word of God Day by day, hours upon hours, and I knew that that hunger and that thirst came from God. Blessed is he that hungers and thirsts out the righteousness, for he shall be filled. Yes. God placed that hunger and thirst in me. I devoured his word, and I became a blessed person. And so this is God. This is something that someone is drawing me, so I believe him on this part. But mm -hmm. not yet seeing the miracle signs and the wonders. And all of a sudden, here's my son got, got getting sick. And yes, so Lord. now the word is... Mm -hmm. You know, sweat up in me. Now, faith. 
cause those things that be not as though they were. Ye shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mm -hmm. I was operating that thing. We laying hands on, we were anointing with mm -hmm. all. We were speaking faith and everything else we knew how to do. And it was mm -hmm. getting worse. It was getting worse. We were, we were maturing in God, a lot of things to learn. Right. It seems like we were losing on every hand. And it seemed like yeah, the more we prayed, the sicker he got. And then so being a mother, the mother steps in and says, listen, this is our baby. And then, you know, the things that comes in your mind say, listen, CPS going to come here, take that child and y'all going to jail. Mm -hmm. You let that baby die. You going to jail. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wrestling with all these things here, trying to walk by faith, believe God, right. standing on the word of God, knowing he's my mm -hmm. savior, not disappointing God, trying to be not be like Asa that sought the physicians and was seeking God first and trying to stand on this here and hearing all this here. So you got common sense. You let that baby die. You going to jail. And that's what the devil kept telling you. You going to that baby, that baby going to die and y'all going to jail. So day one mm -hmm. of standing in faith, believing yes, the word Lord. of God, God, you are a healer. By his stripes, by your stripes, he's healed. Day two came. And I'm telling you, it was getting worse and worse. And so I mean, my wife, she's trying to stand with me in faith. And the mother in her took over. Like, look here, I know you're the man of faith and power, but I'm looking at my baby. Uh, you can't put your faith on my baby. Let's, let's do something. So the third day came. I'm still mm -hmm. standing. The word of God. She trying her best to stand with me. We standing on the word. We trying to encourage ourselves, each other. My faith get dwelling, it hit me, hit me. I'm like, I'm going, I'm losing out. And then she gets a little faith. And we're just going back and yes. forth in this thing. Amen. The yes. third day came. I said, you know what? Yes, Lord. I says, you take him to the doctor. Mm -hmm. After the third day, I said, I'm going to stay here and continue to pray. She takes him to the doctor, to the ER. They wasn't gone, I guess, a half an hour. Mm -hmm. Come back. Right. They say they couldn't find nothing wrong with him. Mm -hmm. He have a high fever. He's sick, can't keep anything down. They come back and says they can't find anything wrong with him. That's when I got mad. Skin and bones. I, I'm going to tell them how skin and bones he was. I got angry. I said, you mean to tell me the devil just robbed me of $300? Because that visit was like $300. Mm -hmm. Robbed me of $300. Yep. And these do doctors can't tell me what's wrong with my son. Then I got furious. And I said, well, you know what? If they can't find anything then I know it's the enemy. I know it's the enemy. And so being still young in the ministry, but having a good heart, yes. I just begin to go and take my Bible and just read it. So my wife went to the store. She went to get something to eat. And so he was laying in the bed and I had a, my study. I made a makeshift study in the hallway between the, the, the kitchen and one of the bedrooms. And that's how, and I was sitting at the table just reading my Bible, digging and trying to get all the faith I can, just reading the word, reading the word, quoting yes, the scriptures. I, I, I read the word and then I go in the bathroom because the bathroom was right there by it. I get in the bathroom, kneel on the bath, on the toilet seat and pray and believe God, speaking in tongues, doing everything I know to do, yes. just trying to build up my most holy faith. Then I mm -hmm. get up from there, go back to reading the word, what the word says. And every time I would get to reading the word, I would hear him sigh. <laughs> And then I would look over there and literally it looked as if the enemy had his hands in his abdomen and looking at me at the same time, taunting me. Mm -hmm. And he'll pick him up like this here and he'll take a deep breath and he'll push him back down in the bed and just yes. look at me. And then look as if he was saying, a man of faith and power, man, mm -hmm. some kind of man of faith and power you are. Man of faith and power. And it looked as every time the enemy do this here, I dig in the word. Tears streaming down my face. God, I'm believing you. Yes, you got to start asking all those questions. Why is this happening to me? Lord, have I lost my faith? What have I done wrong? Have sin entered in? All the questions that we ask that's, when we're being defeated. Because right. we don't know what. We're just grasping that's for right. straws. Grasping for straws. And we're trying to get it done. And so I'd get up and go pray. Bleed, uh, just speak it in tongues. Praying in my most holy faith. You know, unctions and moanings and groans that can't be uttered. And then I come back, get in the word, and the enemy, I do it again. Lift him up, push him back down. Yes. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he did that one time. And I, I tell people, it's sort of like when you watch those Mortal Kombat games, how the, the, the people are fighting and that whoever's winning, you see their life, their life line or whatever goes down now and when the lifeline goes to zero the other man says finish him yeah. it's like when the enemy did that one for the last time mm -hmm. and he pushed him down right. my faith had it felt mm -hmm. as if it dwindled and I was finished I just went completely blank 
It was like everything was gone. It looked like I had no faith. Had no faith. Yes. Here I am Thank you, in Jesus. the Word, digging in it, praying, doing all I know how to do, doing everything I knew how to do, and it seemed like I got defeated. But all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, it mm -hmm. felt like somebody had came and sat in my lap, put, put my body on like a suit, lifted me up. Mm -hmm. I walked over to him, and I laid my hands on him yes, and said, seeing that he's a seed of Abraham, he ought be loosed from this infirmity. Yes, amen. And when I said those are all the words I said, wasn't me. It was somebody working in me that spoke mm -hmm. these words. Yes. Seeing that he's a seed of Abraham, ought he be loosed from this infirmity. And he fell yes, as Lord. dead. His whole body just went limp. Fear tried to overtake me. I shook him, Jaria, Jaria. And he woke up and said, huh? When he woke up, I said, are you hungry? He said, yes, sir. Hadn't eaten, in three, hadn't eaten in three days, didn't have an appetite, didn't desire to have an appetite. Yes. I went and made him, I think it was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Fed it to him. I went back to my desk because I saw what God had <laughs> did. He had got the deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He had got the deliverance. Was up, being normal. Then I went back to my desk weeping like a baby because I felt that I had failed God Felt my, failed my calling, and I was less than a preacher, less than a man of faith. How can you call yourself a man of faith? You just lost against. You just lost this battle with the devil. You had no faith. You just gave up. And then all of a sudden, while I was while I was condemning myself, a hand, I felt a hand on this this shoulder right here, mm -hmm. and I heard these words. That's all he said was, "Tim, I'll never leave you faithless." That's yes. how. Oh, I know it. Yes, all I heard, felt the hand, Amen. heard the voice. Amen. I'll never leave you faithless. Yes. All these words begin Amen. to come back to my remembrance. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. He has dealt in every Amen. man the measure of faith. When that woman walked back through that door, <laughs> Jerry yes. was sitting. On the floor, playing with his toy. Yes, he was. Amen. All the flesh had came back to his bones. <laughs> when I saw what the enemy yes. was doing, him laying on his back, you could literally see his spine from looking at his abdomen. He was just that frail. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you what was going on as I begin to mature and God understand. We have an adversary. Right. An enemy had attacked yes, my child. Lord. An enemy had attacked him. The mm -hmm. doctors couldn't find out what was wrong right. with him. So I knew it had to be a spirit. When the spirit, when the Holy Ghost spoke through me, because it wasn't me, mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit took over and yes. spoke through me and said, seeing, he acknowledged who this child was. Mm -hmm. This child was sanctified by me because I am a seed of Abraham. So yes. therefore that made him a seed of Abraham. And so the Holy Ghost declared, seeing that he is a seed. And he pointed to him, seeing that he is a seed of Abraham with my hand on his head. Seeing that he's a seed of Abraham. Yes. Ought he be loose from this infirmity. Yes. And he was loosed immediately. Amen. The devil had to let him go. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, a child that was sick for three days, not eating any nourishment, the yes. fatness had automatically came back on his bones. When she walked through the door, he was a yes. normal Amen. child. Healed from yes, the crown of his Lord. head to the soles Thank of his you, feet. Jesus. Immediately. Ooh. You can't tell me. God ain't real. Mm -mm. I am right. not going to let anything or anybody move me from God. Amen. That is what yes, our conviction Lord. is. That's why we believe the word. We're not just teaching to you Bible that we've read and went to school and went to theology, Amen. got some kind of degree and have no idea who God is. Yes, we Amen. have seen and heard it for ourselves. Yes. We're like Peter. We cannot. We can only but t speak the things we have seen and heard. Amen. Yes. I know that there's a real enemy, and I know that yes, God is Lord. not the one that comes to torment us and to teach us yes, the things Lord. through his word. We have an adversary. He despises who we are. He will yes. disrupt your very life. He will destroy you at every chance he got. Mm -hmm. Every chance he get. And he tried to do that with me. And he thought he had me. Right. But guess who stepped in? My God. Savior. Amen. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. And I am never worried about anything that I go through. Because 
even if it felt like the enemy is coming against me and my faith looked like it's dwindling, I remember the words that he spoke to me yes, personally. He spoke these words to me personally. Tim, I'll never leave you faithless. Amen. He will not do it. He wouldn't let Thomas be faithless. He's not going to let you be faithless. All you got to do is believe and trust him and hear his word. Now, guess what? Yes, he is no respect of person. The same thing that he spoke over my life, he'll speak over your life. And I believe that it goes for you as well. He'll yes. never leave you faithless. You will never be able to say, I don't have any faith. Right. You got it. You got yes. it. You just got to trust him. You got to trust God. Trust God in his word. Now, I'm going to show you what happened. If we look at 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 12. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to find out what happened at that day. We got word. What, you, what I'm telling you is, is biblical. What I'm telling you is biblical. When it felt like I didn't have any faith. Like it felt like I, the enemy just turned me to the point where my faith looked like it just became, you know, I didn't lose it. it fear overtook me. Mm -hmm. What I was seeing was causing fear in me and the fear was getting greater than the faith in me. And the fear in me override because they're like, I can't do anything. I'm helpless. This is exactly what you're going on. Going on. I'm helpless. Why can't I defeat yes, the enemy? Lord. I'm like the disciples. Why can't I catch this thing out? Why can't I cause the healing to manifest? And so fear is overwhelming me. Wavering is overwhelming me. And now my faith is hidden. Can't be seen. Inactive. Void. But now the greater one rises up. Amen. And he does something that yes, the word says. Lord. So let's read 1 Corinthians 12. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. 1 Corinthians. Oh, first. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. First, first, first. 1 Corinthians. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 12. 12. We'll talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Seven. Okay. 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it, that one and the same self-spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So what happened on that day when the Lord, I believe he was observing what was going on. Amen. And seeing the whole conflict of the battle, watching the enemy going back and forth. Yes. When the devil thought he had me. Yes. The Holy Spirit released a gift of faith in me. Amen. Where I felt like I had lost my faith. That's why you will never lose your faith. That's why he'll never allow you to be faithless. Because then the Holy Spirit will kick in right. and release the gift of faith. Amen. That gift, which is a Thank promise. That's yes. something you don't earn. It is given, given at that time. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit of yes, God Lord. dealt Thank to me at Jesus. that moment. Yes. The gift of faith. And all of a sudden, something rose up in me and caused me to stand up on my feet. Operate took over. It's like I was possessed yes, by another yes. person, possessed by the Holy Ghost. Laid my hands, walked me through the whole thing. Here I am over there, whimpering like a, you know, like a, like a little puppy, not knowing what to do. Yes. But now, where did all this wisdom come from? Where did all this gift of faith? Where did the gift of healing come? From? I received the gift of faith. Jari received the gift of healing. Lay hands, seeing that he's a seed of Abraham. Ought he be loose from yes, this infirmity? Lord, amen. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost worked in our lives at that moment, mm -hmm. and we saw God work a miraculous miracle, yes, and it was the greatest, one of the greatest adventures we have ever experienced in our life. And we have never been able; the devil has never been able to cause us to turn back. That's yes. the conviction of why Thank we you, preach Lord. the way we preach. You can't tell me that God is not real. There are a lot of people that are going forth to other religions. Mm -hmm. They are forsaking God. They are calling Jesus all kind of things, black Jesus and all this here kind of stuff. No, yeah. he is God. Now, all that, all them labels yes. and all those descriptions, the people, man is giving him that. This Bible here is true to his, to, yes. to his word. Thank you. Jesus. It is true. And to those that understand and believe yes. it and yes. reveal it and reverence it, they, they, they will receive it. Yes. And I'm telling you that Amen. the God we serve is omnipotent, is great, and he yes. will move on your behalf. Thank and I'm you, telling Lord. you. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are real. Mm -hmm. I'm a living witness that experienced it. Yes. That you know what? And from that moment on, 
I had my Savior's word personally yes. who laid his hands on this shoulder mm -hmm. and said, I'll never leave you faithless. And all of you say, well, God has never done that for me. God has never spoken a word to me. Open up to receive it. Open up to receive yes, it. Lord. Open up to believe it. God, I know you're real. Reveal yourself to me. I want to experience who you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, them that are his, he watches over them. He will not let anything, no weapon formed against you shall yes, prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, he shall utterly Thank condemn. You, Don't yes, let the devil cause you to Lord. curse God. Don't let the devil cause you to lose your integrity. That's where we mess up at. When we start cursing God and being like Job's wife. Why don't you, just, you Job, you still yeah. maintain your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? And a lot of us do that. <laughs> we get mad, stump our feet and curse God instead of reverence him. He says, wait a minute. I'm your father. If I be your father, where's my respect? Where's my honor? Right. In the midst of everything, you honor him. Mm -hmm. And when you make up Thank your mind, you say, Lord. you know what? Regardless of what I go through, Thank regardless you. of how I'm going yes. through, regardless of how I'm being attacked, I will always honor God. And he will never be yes. said that I lost my integrity toward him or spoke anything evil or laid anything evil to the charge of God. Yes. Not anything. And so right now you may be going through something. And what you're going through is causing your mouth to, to talk sideways. You maintain your integrity Amen. and say what the word says. And know this here. Faith is in you. Let Jesus cultivate the faith through the spirit. For guess what? That faith Amen. is a fruit and a spirit. A fruit and, <laughs> and a gift. Gift mm -hmm. of faith. The fruits of faith. They, 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 they work. Faith, is, faith is in everything we have. It's everything we need. Yes. Without it, we can't do anything. The Bible says anything that's not of faith is sin. So we need faith. You got faith. You got to believe it. But if the devil can talk you out of it, you ain't got any faith. And you believe it, he'll win every time. But I'm telling you, faith will rise up in you. God will release to you the gift of faith where you feel like you don't have it, feel like it's gone. Your elder brother Jesus, your Savior, Amen. your Lord, Thank you, Lord. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. And he will develop it. And I'm yes. telling you, we should be going higher and higher from faith to faith. Our faith is growing and being developed. Guess what? Like I say one in one teaching, it's still the same faith. It's still the same faith. It's just just like when I was born. Born May 1st, 1966. I came out and broke forth the womb. I was Tim Campbell. Mm -hmm. At five years old, I was still Tim Campbell, just a little bigger. When I became 17 years old, I was still the same Tim Campbell. Just mm -hmm. a little bigger. Here I'm standing yeah. before you. I'm still the same Tim Amen. Campbell, but I'm a little bit, little bit bigger. And at that day when my mama bought me forth in the room, I was dealt to the world. Mm -hmm. Dealt to the world. That measure, I'm the measure. Dealt to the world. But guess what? I developed and I grew. God, when you were born again into this world, mm -hmm. God dealt to you the measure of faith. The measure, not a measure, the measure of faith. And guess what? He wants you to develop that faith. And know this here, that if we look unto Jesus, yes. he is the author and the finisher Amen. of our faith, he will cause your faith to be developed. Mm -hmm. So now you tell me what mountain is bigger. You tell me what cancer is bigger. You tell me what debt is bigger. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing is bigger than our God. Amen. Our God Lord. is bigger. And so guess what he wants to do? He wants you to magnify him. And everything you go through. Mm -hmm. So from this day forward, magnify your God. Diminish your problems. Mm -hmm. Magnify your God. Let's pray. If you got this here, your life would never be the same again. Amen. And I'm telling you, we have seen firsthand many more miracles that God has worked in our life. And so I, I don't, I'm not moved by the enemy. I'm not moved by the enemy. Not Amen. one bit. Thank you. Lord. Not sickness or disease. Do we have battles? We all have battles. That's why we're in a fight. That's why Paul say, mm -hmm. fight the good fight of faith. I it. You don't think that this thing is just going to, that we're going to just go through this thing once we got Jesus, it's all good? No. <laughs> we got Jesus you know, and the devil don't fight. like it. He, he, he knows uh, uh, that it, we are connected yes. and he's going to come at you fighting yes. with you because he's nothing but a bully. He despised the relationship we have with mm -hmm. God. It's sort of like this here. Yes. I saw something as a, in, in elementary school that I thought was just totally, absolutely ludicrous. A young man wanted to date a girl, and she didn't want to have anything to do with it. Rightfully so, because he was, he was a stone-cold fool. <laughs> and she was walking home with her sister. And this is what this, this young man did. He says, if you don't talk to me, I'll beat your sister up. 
And, you know, everybody looking at Dr. Smith, this is crazy. And sure enough, this, I'm not going to say what I want to say, went over there and commenced of jumping on this girl's sister and beating her like a man. And mm. everybody grabbed me. First, everybody was in shock that he would do something like that. And then we pulled him off there and said, man, what is wrong with you? That's exactly how the mm -hmm. devil is. Amen. If you want God, I don't like them. You don't serve me, I'll attack your child. You don't serve me, I'll, I'll attack your money. And that's what he tried to do. Mm -hmm. He tried to do anything that he can to get you to renounce God. And some people have. Wow. Lord, you took my mama. Lord, you took my child. That's why I'm mad at God. You right where the devil wants you. Mm -hmm. Right where he wants you. Right. Guess what? If we were brought up in the kingdom of God and we were being taught right, we wouldn't have lost our child so easily. We wouldn't have lost our parents so easily. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't know how to stand and fight and right. say, no, That's you right. shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. And that the wicked one, we would have cast him out. Mm hmm would have cast him out. Amen. My people do perish for lack yes, of knowledge. Lord. And there's a lot of things that the body of Christ don't know. But we got people that are trying to raise you up and teach you the word of God. Ministers like the body of believers in Christ to teach you. Wait a minute. Your God is bigger. Yes. Faith is the substance of things. Hopeful evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Call those things that be not as though they were. Whatever you say, whatever you do, don't be moved by what you see. Don't consider the situation. Yes. But call those things that be not as though they were. And whatever the word says, stand on it and don't be moved. Don't let the devil have you children yes. don't let the devil have your finances Amen. don't let the devil have your, your your who you are don't let him have it yes you stand your ground and stand on the word and don't be moved mm -hmm. and don't be like thomas be a faithless and but but what good news is jesus said don't be thomas be not faithless yes. but be this here believe even though you don't see it yes. tim why do you believe like you believe because he said it mm -hmm. have you saw it no he said it have you seen it? No, he said, said it. it. Amen. That's good enough for me. I can count on his word. Because if he said mm -hmm. it, he's not a liar. Yes, he don't Lord. change. It will come to pass. Yes. So, if you're sick in your body, mm -hmm. look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. If something been, the enemy has been telling you, well, you just ain't got faith to be healed. Cast that imagination down, cast that thought down, and say, you know what, devil, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by time, distance, or space. I am healed. Yes. I am delivered in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ Thank of Nazareth, Jesus. and I'm going to let patience have a perfect work because it shall come to pass. It shall Amen. come to pass. I am healed now. I'm not moved by what I see, and I don't consider what I'm going through. Amen. What I consider the word of God and God, you can't lie. And tell God, say, Lord, you can't lie. You can't right. lie. Amen. I am healed. I have received your healing. That which you have procured for me through my through, through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his blood is still on the mercy seat. Yes. And with his blood, uh, I have been made free. And by his stripes, I am healed. Mm -hmm. And you declare that and you declare that with a vengeance. You declare with an attitude. And I'm telling you that wicked one will loose you and let you go. Mm -hmm. Seeing that you are a seed of Abraham. Ought you to be loose from that infirmity right now. So be loose in yes. Jesus' my name. From the crown of your head to the soles of Thank your you, feet. Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Yes. Go over that body you, like Jesus. fire of just in rivers of fire Jesus. in Jesus' mighty name. Burn out all yes. the chaff of the adversary. Burn out every cell of the cancer. Burn out every cell, O oh God, of the sickness. I command the spirit of infirmity to leave your body now in Jesus' mighty name. You are healed. Be healed in yes. Jesus' mighty Jesus. name. And I command that wicked one to loose you and let you go. You are loose from every infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command your finances to be loose. I command your children to be loose. I command your mind to be loose in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name, Jesus and you be free, yes, be free, Lord. be Thank free you, of every work of the Lord enemy in the name of Jesus Thank Christ you, of Nazareth. Now, God, we Thank give you glory, we give you praise, yes, and we patiently Lord. wait Thank for you, that Lord. which we are expecting, Thank oh God, you, and desire yes, of Lord. you. And we're not moved by in what we see, name of Jesus. we're Thank not moved you, by what we see, Hallelujah. we're only moved by what you Thank say, you, God. And your word says yes, you loved Lord. us, you loved us while we were yet sinners, you considered us, oh God, to be yours. Now, that's just one story. Yes, we got Lord. many, you, many, Jesus. many, many more. Yes, and I'm telling you, Amen. spread the word. Tell Amen. them, hey, there are some people that have really seen God moving. And they start talking about mm -hmm. the Bible. They've seen the Bible men. They've seen the Bible manifested in real. You know. Yes. So Amen. this book here, you can't pry this away from me. I've seen it work. I've seen mm -hmm. it work so many times. I'm telling you, your yes, God is real. Lord. Amen. Receive your healing. 
receive your deliverance. Yes. Receive your forgiveness. And Amen. above all, yes. receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Shows Amen. being saved, we believe in God for. So, Father, we thank mm -hmm. you for the thank opportunity you, to minister your word to your people. Yes, Lord. Souls being saved and brought into the kingdom, God. Thank you. We believe in you for signs Amen. and wonders, miraculous miracles, God. Testimonies Amen. of people being healed. As we begin yes. to show you, O oh God, Thank show the people Jesus. who you are, that they can believe yes, that the word is just not the word, Thank Lord, but that they'll see Hallelujah. and hear the word being spoken with power and demonstration. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' Jesus mighty name. name. Listen, we'll see you next Thank Sunday, you, Adventures Amen. of Faith Thank with the Campbells. Jesus. And we'll Amen. see that God is a real God and he's a mighty God and he's a good God. And he's a great God yes. and greater to be praised. Amen. Amen. You be blessed. That's our prayer. Yes, in Jesus' name.